bringing to you the most important news. The things that you care about. The things that are fun. The travels and adventures. The stories and songs. From here and from there. From the furthest side of everywhere. If she knows how to listen, and she knows how to hop, your fearless reporter with the ears that flaw. Right here on Rabbit Ears News, the Weekly Carrot. Welcome back to Rabbit Ears News, the Weekly Carrot. How's everybody doing today? How are you today, Magic? I'm okay. I'm also okay. How are you today, Mr. Blaze? I'm a, you know... You seem perturbed. You know, when somebody asks you how you doing, you always say, oh, I'm fine. But, you know, like, you, sometimes you're not fine. I'm not feeling fine today. I, I feel pretty upset about something. Do you need anything? Um, thanks for asking. You know, I think I'm okay. It's just something bugging me, something that happened. But, uh... It, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just I'm thankful that I've got friends that are good enough that I can tell you guys that instead of just oh I'm fine and then go away. Well, so, some we love don't. you and we love listening to you, and we're here to listen to talk whenever you're ready, if you're ready. But you don't have to talk if you don't feel like it. But just know that we are here and we love you, and everything is going to be okay. Thanks. With your You're big welcome. old listening rabbit ears. Better than my ancestors. <laughs> anyway, maybe to cheer up Mr. Blaze today, uh, we can watch the last episode of Mandy Bear Tenants, episode 7. It's my very favorite TV show ever, and if anything's going to cheer up Mr. Blaze, I think it might be that. I think, I think maybe you're right. Let's check it out. Rose presses the button, and the wall slides open, revealing treasures beyond their wildest dreams. And we are running out of them on planet Tarpa. Our people are going to go hungry. We are running out too. And our people are scared what will happen to our underground society if we do. Well, it looks like you both have some serious problems to fix. And I might just know how to help. depths of space are two planets, Zevioid and Tarpal. The Zevioids need magic stones to live underground, and the Tarpals need the magic stones to run their food replicating machines. But what will they do when the magic stones run out? We join our heroes underground with the Zevioid and Tarpal leader, who have come together for the first time ever. Thank you for sending those magic stone samples to my space lab. I have run an analysis and have determined that the stones were very similar to sunlight. It allows the Zevioids to live underground comfortably, and the power from the stones operates the top of food machines as well as most things on the planet. Am I right? That's an excellent summary. I couldn't have said it better myself. So, for Kloon, have you come up with a solution to this awful problem? Well, the main problem here is that both societies rely so heavily on one thing. The magic stones. But what else are we supposed to do? Margaret. Since all your machines run from magic stones, and magic stones work like solar energy, I will send you instructions on how to build solar panels. They are cheap, easy to build, and you have all the materials you need on Tarpal. I estimate you can switch to renewable solar energy by the end of the month. Wow, thank you so much. We look forward to the change. Now, Zevioid leader. Please call me Janet. Sorry, Janet. I have been studying your history, 
And the reason you are living underground is because the giant Zibelblocks volcano erupted and left your atmosphere unlivable. These are true words you speak, mighty snake man. Well, I have run tests on your atmosphere and everything is back to normal. Actually, you could have lived above ground for the last 250 years if you wanted. That's incredible news. You don't need to completely move upstairs, so to speak. All you really need are some sunroofs. For a start, get some light and fresh air into those caves. Well, looks like everything is great and we solved all the problems. Way to go, team. What about the astronaut? We still haven't found them. Astronaut? We had an Earth astronaut crash land on Tarple recently. They are staying in a luxurious hotel at the moment. I will send for him to join you. Another job well done. Let's get that astronaut and head back to Earth. And speaking of Earth, by the time Doris, Nyad, Veltrax, and Clore arrive back with a missing astronaut, the new cafeteria is now complete. Doris, Nyad, I'm so happy to see you. Where on Earth did this cool cafeteria come from? I don't know, I went for a nap and when I woke up, here it was. Cindy's being silly, Nyad. Rose and Rick the Head discovered a big secret about the orphanage. Before we talk about secrets or anything else, I have a serious question. Sure, Veltrax. What is it? Have you whipped up a batch of your world-famous burritos yet? Because I'm starving. Oh, Veltrax. <laughs> Wow. wow! Holy! That last episode of Nanny Bear Tenants! You know, I, I'm so excited. You know, there, there's comics, there's books, there's... You can keep watching the adventure and reading about it, and... Uh, Nanny Bear Tenants is pretty awesome. I'm very, very excited for uh, the rest of their adventure, mm. because this season uh, of the show has been just crazy and, and so, so interesting. It's, it's been, been a wild a wonderful ride. time with you guys here in New York. Mr. Blake, are you okay? Wait a minute, I'm hearing a ringing sound in my ear. Is this yeah, the breaking, that's the breaking news, news sound? News. That's today's breaking news sound, guys. I'm feeling a little low. Okay. That's what the noise well. you make if you're a bit sad. By the way, everybody, in case you need to. What's the breaking news today? <laughs> breaking news, everybody. Okay, what's the breaking news, Phil? Oh. Everyone gets sad sometimes. That is breaking news, true. There's okay. a good chance that you'll feel better after having a proper cry. That's true. Or doing some bun food. Or doing some bun food, quite true. True, true. Sadness is one of the four main human emotions. The other ones are happiness, fear, and anger. Mm. And like under a microscope, happy tears look different than sad tears. Really? And they both look different from the tears you get when you're chopping up an onion. So it's um, really cool how your brain chemistry can actually impact like the way your body reacts to things. Interesting. Um, your nose runs when you cry because it's sharing the hard work of crying. Nice. Um, you're more likely to cry at the nighttime during the day t than you are during the daytime. Interesting. And when you cry because of like overwhelming joy, the first tear comes out of your right eye. And when it's due to being like really, really sad, the first tear will come out of your left eye. Um, but don't quote me on that one because that may or may not be a myth. Interesting. And that's our breaking news today. Thanks, Beth. What's that other sound? Was, oh, you got an incoming call, Beth. An incoming call? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Who's Hello? Call? Hello? Oh, hey, yeah. Yeah, it's me, Mr. Benton. How oh my you gosh. Hi, Mr. Benton. How are you doing today? Uh, yeah, you're not so great. I think I'm having kind of a bad day, and you're about to have a bad day as well. Oh, no. What happened? I'm sorry. I got some bad news. Remember a little while ago we were talking about how the, uh, the ratings were going down and stuff like that? Yes. Well, I got to tell you, 
the show has been canceled. Canceled? Yes. But we worked so hard. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's been canceled, so you're gonna have to leave New York. This is the last show. I hope you had a good time. We had a great time. It's just, you know, that that's business. That's business. That's business. So I I got I apologize to you. Your uh, plane tickets to get back to Canada will be at at the front office. Take care of yourself, Beth. Finish up your last show and then get out. Thank you, Mr. Benton. You've been such a great boss, and I know how hard you work to help keep us on the air. And I really appreciate all of the work you did and the opportunity you had to give us to do this super awesome show here in New York City. Yeah, thanks, Beth. You're welcome. Thank you. Get on with it. Bye. Wow, guys, that's that's some really sad news. Um, it's a good thing that I am around all of my very bestest friends and they understand how I'm feeling. Yeah, I thought I was sad before. Yeah. Now I'm... Uh... How are you doing, Magic? Are you okay? I'm, I'm quite disappointed. I just feel bad, like, I hope that, like, it's so fun hanging out together. Yeah. I, I'm, I guess I just really hope that this doesn't mean that we won't hang out anymore. I think that I'll hang out with you guys because you are some of my bestest friends, and I love you so much, even if we aren't doing our uh, super cool TV shows. So I'm happy to hang out yeah, with you Yeah, I'll never stop hanging out with you guys. You guys are my favorite. All right, well, let's finish up this. Let's get on what with the show, next? like Mr. Benton said. So next up, we have an advertisement. Cool. We'll return after these messages. Sarah, you're the best sister any boy could ask for. Gilbert, what are you getting at? You see, Sarah, I'm a growing boy. And not only am I growing, I'm farming. You haven't started farming again, have you? I'm afraid so. And you know what happens whenever I run a busy farm. I sure do. Alligators. So what do you want? Why did you buy me this plane ticket to come all the way from Albania to meet you here on this concrete? Sarah, it's my birthday today. Oh, Philbert, I totally forgot. It's okay. I haven't gotten you anything for your birthday in the last 30 years. But remember when we were fighting together in the conflict in Antarctica? Yes, I do remember. That was a birthday to cherish beyond all else. Wait a minute. Aren't we identical twins? Yes, we are. If only dear mother could see us now. No, you fool. It's my birthday as well. I suppose I owe you 30 years of birthday presents. Yes, you do. And if you don't pay up, I'll be forced to disconnect the illegal cable you have installed into your treehouse. It's moments like this that I'm happy that every Chimney the Cat Day, the Varsity Soup Chef sends me a package of Chimney O's cereal. Sarah, since you have a gold-plated swimming certificate, I gift to you my Chimney O's. Philbert, you are no longer the filthy ramen noodle hound Mother says you are. like the morning or the not morning. Philbert, call me a cab. I'm going to go eat these with the Fifth Avenue Phantom. Chimneyos! Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching that ad. And welcome to part two of the show. And I part guess- Part two of our very last show. I guess that's the last part of the whole show. Yeah. Ever. That's it. So let's okay. hear um, what the very last question um, okay. we're gonna get. That'll yes. cheer us up That will cheer bit. us up because we love hearing from Yeah, you people. guys have always got the best questions. Always cheers me up. Okay, where's this question coming from though? From magic somewhere maybe? Some 
Oh, under the hat? Under the hat. That is crazy. It, it gets me every time. Every time. All right. Yeah, it's a magical hat. Very magical. Okay, what do we got for our very last question? Who's it from? It's from Sarah. <gasps> Sarah? Sarah? Sarah, Sarah Moon? Moon? <laughs> <laughs> if you made a book, what would it be about? Oh, that's if, a good question. If I made a book, it would be all about my adventures as a bunny and getting to be a newscaster and eating all my carrots and getting to hang out with my very bestest friends, uh, Magic and Mr. Blaze, and also Mr. Benton can be in the story sometimes too. So, I like, so like a biography? Like a biography. Or an autobiography because you're writing it yourself. Yeah, but it would also have like all my best friends, like the three donuts and uh, the thoughtful dodo mm -hmm. and um, Pun, Pun, Pun and, and Dave. Dave and Chimmy the cat because of Chimmy Cat Day. And really just everybody that's been on the show would get like a little piece of my book. That's awesome. Well, I guess we get to find out uh, the last last adventures of Pun Pun and Dave then. We'll see if they, they, they make it to New York. Let's hope so. I hope so too. And here we are, we are outside of the SC Entertainment TV station. We have finally, we have made it all the way to New York with, uh, we, we just heard the news that uh, the show is canceled and uh, Mr. Benton has offered us a plane to get back to Calgary. So that's, uh, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a very strange situation that happened. We, we came all the way across the country and now they just want to ship us back to Calgary. Yes, uh, but do you know what, Pan Pan, I have an idea about this. Yeah, what's your idea, Dave? Well, I think me and you, we've, uh, we've had such a good time visiting all these cool places across the country and everything, and I, I think maybe, Pan Pan, we should keep doing it. We should keep doing it? But how? How are we gonna pay for it, man? Well, uh, let's, uh, we'll sell the plane tickets that Mr. Benton gave us, and we'll, uh, We'll keep renting the car and we'll just keep, we'll use the money to uh, drive around the country some more. I like that idea, Dave. Having a, having a road trip with you has been like the best time of my life. Yes, you know what, Pan Pan, I believe it has been the best time of my life as well. We should uh, get back in the car then. Hey, Dave, what kind of car does a farmer drive? Huh, Pan Pan, I do not know. Um... What kind of car would the farmer drive? Well, I heard that he drives a corn vertible. Oh, Pan Pan, you are definitely the best person I've ever met in my life. Well, Dave, you've got a friend in me. Oh, there, there you go again, my friend. It was a beautiful pun happening in my life. Well, Dave, let's head out to the mountains. Oh, yeah? Why, why should we head out to the mountains, my dearest and oldest friend of all time? Well, we should go to the mountains because they're funny. I guess we could uh, go to the mountains because they're funny. Uh, I, do, I, don't see, I don't see what you're talking about, but yes, we can definitely do that because the mountains are funny. Why are they so funny, Pum Pum? Just tell me the truth here, my friend. Well, they are hill areas. Oh, hill areas. Yes, I see. All right. We'll see you later. See you next time, everybody. We are on our way for more adventures. Yeah. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Okay. Welcome to the show. We're watching a, a video. This is my friend Terrence. This is my other friend Lane. And I'm just going to get going right now. Here we go, guys. Let's watch this film. I hope you're excited. Hopefully it's better than the last one. It's, uh, it's coming. I don't even know what it is. Okay. Oh, hey, let's do our homework. I don't let's know. Let's do our homework at the diner. I don't know. I want to I wanna eat some dinner. That's so hilarious. Here's your notebook. Write down what you want to order. 
I'm gonna get a hamburger and a Oh steak my god, pack. the Peninsula Pelican? Pelican? Yeah, that's the that's the newspaper they like to read. Hey, your brakes look good. <laughs> hey, give me, look at the checklist. Here's what's wrong with your face. Oh man, I'm so sad. Oh, she's kissing oh, me. Let me shine that light. Let what? Hold on. Yeah. What? Oh, what? Oh, Dude, that guy that really violent bad. really quickly. I, she's she's mad. Oh, she's angry. This guy's like, I can't find your gas tank. It's missing. Uh, maybe, maybe you should have a look. Oh, I'm gonna go take a look. Dad, I couldn't find the gas tank. They told me I didn't have a gas tank and I was a loser down at the old mechanic garage. Now, hey, I'll... why are you telling my kitty to lose? <laughs> <laughs> How dare hey. you tell my kid that he's a loser? Well, it's because he is. I... Wow, he's got like a. Is that a hat or a hair? That's exciting. That's, That's a, a shiny Just hair piece. Okay. Let's, well, I uh, don't have a car now, so we gotta walk to the movies. Oh, come on. Let's go. What are you gonna see at the movies? I wanna oh, see the. Uh, gonna see. The gators. I wanna see some alligators at the movies. Oh, there's the cops all of a sudden. Hey, you too. Be on the lookout for. The gas tank. Be on the lookout for a lady who lives in a clock. <laughs> uh, so, uh, they're doing the research. We'll hey, find this lady. What is, what is this movie? Uh, it's, it's about safety, maybe. I saw there was a Pegasus, and she's writing it. it now they're on TV. See, it's a, a very confusing film. Elaine, how do you feel about this film so far? I think it's a film about becoming some kind of reptile, like publicly becoming some kind of reptile with public scales for to do <laughs> safety. To do safety because people might smash your lights and steal your gas tank. Yeah. I like these guys are just learning how to grow scales. He's, this is the union of mechanics, and they're not happy about the, the reptile people taking over. He's like, I see the reptile people. Let's take the signs to the cars so they know what they're doing. I'm hey, let's get ready for the big safety race. Take the gas tank out. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, the safest way to race. Put in some gallons. Uh, oh, gotta shine that up. Gotta take out the lights. Smart. Oh, Ivy. Ivy. Check if anything's like falling from above, I think. Is, is that crazy lady with the hammer still there? The cops are got her under. Yeah, she was there. She's suspicious. Oh, 45 hey. Pegasus. Oh, that was... I, you know what? I think I that's my favorite movie we've watched so far. I don't know. No, you don't know? I no. give it a 9 out of 10. I don't know. Lane, how, what do you feel? How, give me some, some feedback on the movie. Mm, I think, like, it just makes me think of the word cerulean. Cerulean? That's a beautiful yeah. color. Yeah. I rate that clip unsafe. You don't think it's safe? No. I think Elaine had something with the, the reptile angle. So um, that's what I think. And the, the lady with the hammer scared me a little bit. I didn't like her. Well, I'm glad why that... was she trying to break the headlight? I don't know. I'm glad the police got involved. I think it's part of some kind of battle between some pegasuses and some reptile people. And it, it had, that's probably something to do with why that lady... Like, I think probably that lady was trying to smash the light like for safety of some kind, and then all those people like stopped her. And... Wait, I have a question. What I if you have it. more than one Pegasus? What is it? Is it a Pegasi? I think it's Pegasus. It's, it's, it's. Pegasi? Anyways, that's all the time we got today on uh, uh, the Rabbit Ears Reviews. Thank you for joining me and Terrence and Elaine. I hope it wasn't too terrifying watching the lady with the hammer and the Pegasus size. Pegasi. Pegasus Maybe it's size. like Pegasus. Pegasus? Okay. Pegasus. Yeah. Pegasus. All right, children. Thank you. Bye. Ice is my life.
last episode of Galaxy Weather. And today we are going to tell you all about the weather on Pluto. Okay, so Pluto has always been one of my favorite planets. And I like it even more now that we have pictures of it. And you can see that there is a giant heart on the planet. That big giant heart is called the Sputnik Planitia. And it is almost completely made out of nitrogen ice. Some of it melts during the Plutonian summer, and some of it stays frozen all year round. Well, I don't care if Pluto does have a heart of ice. It is still my favorite planet. Some parts of Pluto can spend about 50 years in darkness. And Pluto has such an amazing tilt that its north pole actually points downwards. What an upside down universe we live in. Pluto is very cold, and the temperature goes from about minus 220 degrees to minus 280 degrees Celsius. It has some kind of snow, but we don't know if it's like a real snowfall or just like a weird haze. Pluto has a lot of interesting weather going on for a place that is so far away. Yes, it does. And the coolest thing that I think there is to say about Pluto is that beneath its surface, it probably has an ocean of slushy water that doesn't completely freeze because of the gravity between Pluto and its largest moon. And also something to do with a layer of gas. Okay, are you telling me that Pluto has an entire ocean that's like a Slurpee? Yes, Sydney, that is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. I'm sold. Let's go. Sounds good to me, old friend. Yay! Yay! Thanks for watching the galaxy weather, everybody. See you next time. Bye! Bye. See you on Pluto, suckers! <laughs> <laughs>